119 Minecraft facts you probably didn't know. I went through thousands of different facts and these are my favorite ones. Number one, you can change the size of slimes with commands. A slime of size 256 is the largest and most terrifying mob in the game. Lostboy162 holds the record for the slowest Minecraft speedrun ever recorded. During this 120 hour run, Lostboy was sleeping, eating, working, basically living his normal life. The funniest part is that someone actually had to watch the 120 hours of footage to approve this run. The next glitch is my favorite. You're gonna need a rail and a lot of minecarts with TNT. This will create a moving bomb that will detonate once it hits something. And that something can be you. Now obviously you're not gonna survive this. However, if we quickly change the difficulty, instead of dying, you'll get sent straight to Mars. John Bams has done something that most can only dream of. He has survived over 11,000 days in hardcore. He streams on Twitch doing all kinds of stupid stuff, like building possibly the least efficient wheat farm, dumping 131,000 blocks of sand. But don't get it twisted, this guy is an OG player and he was quite popular 10 years ago. But now he's back, stronger than ever, and his world is the proof of that. He says he's not a builder. I'm not much of a builder but his base looks like this if you're someone who dies a lot you're gonna love the recovery compass because it always points to the location of your last death but dadusak isn't this item op well not really since to craft it you need eight echo shards those can be found in the rare ancient city magnoia friden is an enormous build from the popular design studio varuna i swear it was so hard to pick one build from them as they had so many this is what happens when your job is being a minecraft builder believe it or not this masterpiece only took 12 of days to make. I couldn't do this even if I had a year. You're playing with a friend and you find a horse. You have a saddle but there's two of you and only one horse. Imagine if two people could ride a singular horse. How epic would that be? This change would make the early game on the servers so much fun. One player is in charge of the horse and the other can perhaps shoot down mobs with a bow. Fire used to spread insanely fast. Once it got out of hand it would destroy entire forests. When fire was introduced it was assigned to wood material. So walking through fire made the same sound is walking on planks. You've just finished building your house, but it's dark inside. So why not use the new light block? It will be completely invisible and you can even choose how much light it should put out. However, there is a catch. It will only be obtainable in creative mode. So you're gonna have to stick to using torches. The warden can beat pretty much every mob in the game, but there are a few exceptions. One of them is the shulker. If the conditions are right, one shulker can easily defeat him. That's because shulkers give the levitation effect, but it's not that simple. There needs to be a roof of some sort. Otherwise, the the warden keeps going up until it's out of range. There's only one person in the history of Minecraft who walked to the far land, and that's Kilo Crazy Man. This walk could take years, however Kilo played every day for several hours. Even with this much playtime, the journey took him 9 months. There are 8 super flat presets built into the game. The first gives you 230 layers of stone. The water world will spawn you in the middle of a deep ocean. The next preset is perhaps the friendliest, with plenty of trees, flowers and lava pools. The snowy kingdom is for the those who love igloos. The bottomless pit has cobblestone instead of bedrock. The desert preset gives us desert pyramids, but if you don't like them, choose the next one, which has nothing but sandstone. And lastly, my favorite, the void preset. Sometimes during the battle, you'll notice other zombies joining in. This is because you're fighting a leader zombie. 5% of all zombies spawn as leaders and have the ability to call reinforcements. But don't worry, there is a way around this. Just change the difficulty, because leader zombies only spawn on hard. Years ago, Notch wanted to create a red dragon. However, since then, the idea has been sitting on the shelf. The ender dragon is the final boss, so adding another one seems unlikely. However, Jeb, the lead designer, has stated that if red dragons were ever to be implemented, then players would probably get them from the dragon egg. Every April Fool's, Notch had something up his sleeve. In 2010, he announced Minecraft 4D. In 2011, he added a locked chest into the game. In 2012, Notch created a hoax website for a new game titled Mars Effect. In 2013, he added a banner for Minecraft 2 a pink wither, a talking block of coal, a redstone silverfish, and a new super hostile game mode. Everyone loves a nice TNT cannon. And they are pretty easy to make. There is a lot of unique designs. Some are very simple, others not so much. If you place a turtle egg on the coordinates 000, it will cause every single zombie to start walking towards that location. I have no idea how this glitch works, but it's pretty amazing. You can get mud by either 
finding the mangrove forest or by using a water bottle on a block of dirt. Matt also has some interesting crafting recipes. Combining it with roots will give us this. What? And adding wheat gives us packed mud, which you can use to craft mud bricks, stairs, slabs, walls, you name it. The most famous builder, Grian, constructed an upside down mansion in Hermitcraft season 7. Building this the normal way would have been impressive enough, but for him to build it upside down, I mean, at this point he's just flexing on us. Oh yeah, and he also did it in the nether with ghasts flying around, piglins and hoglins spawning everywhere. When you enter the nether, the loading terrain screen made of dirt should gradually become netherrack. Mojang, listen up. There is no reason not to add this into the game. Why is the loading screen dirt for every dimension? It could also change to endstone when going to the end. The secret updates were 10 weekly patches released by Notch during the alpha days of Minecraft. All secret updates included major new features such as spawners, chickens, boats, redstone and sneaking. Every week there was a new update that's absolutely insane compared to today. Imagine you're just exploring your Minecraft world and you find this. That's an azalea tree. It looks a little like oak but you can easily recognize it by the leaves. It also has super long roots which are made by a new block called rooted dirt and it will only generate underneath these trees. But wait, before you chop it down remember where you found it because every azalea tree leads to the new lush caves. The weakness of the warden is that he can only hit one target at a time so if you get enough mobs to fight him he will be defeated. You can tame as many wolves as you want. That makes it a perfect fit for the job. Same goes for bees. A couple hundred of them should do. Once you find an ancient city that's the place where the warden resides. Build a massive bee farm nearby. This is the biggest Minecraft build and it's not even finished. For years people wanted to recreate the earth. However, thanks to new mods this project became finally possible. This build will have roughly 140 trillion blocks when it's finished. In 2012 Mojang added super flat customization and we can have some fun with it. If you add a sapling layer you will have a world that will try to eat you alive. You can even create a working TNT run in super flat. But the coolest thing happens when you select the desert preset, remove every layer apart from sand and dig straight down. This will create an endless wave of falling sand and it will probably crash your computer. Baby piglins and baby hoglins love each other. Sometimes the baby piglins ride on top of a baby hoglin. However, in this case there is a hard limit of three. So if you manage to find this mob, quickly take a screenshot before the baby piglins run away. Moo Bloom, Copper Golem, Glare, Iceologer, the list goes on. There are many players, including me, that would love to see them added to Minecraft. However, let's face it, they've lost in the live vote and it would make the tradition of voting completely pointless if Mojang were to add the ones that lost. With that being said, we won't forget you Moo Bloom. Back in Minecraft InfDev, there used to be brick pyramids that would naturally generate their purpose, a way of obtaining bricks, as there was no other way to get them. Since the height limit at the time was only 64 and ground level was 32, the pyramid itself was just 32 blocks high. That's nothing compared to my pyramid. A full brick pyramid would contain over 43,000 brick blocks. They were even rarer than the current rarest structure. Goggled Gecko created this working rocket with the use of vertical flying machines. It uses both slime and honey blocks, clearly demonstrating how these two blocks changed Minecraft. Raceworks is literally the Einstein of Minecraft. In 2017 he designed a fully functioning ender dragon farm. This farm produces millions of XP per hour, making it the most efficient farm ever made. The design is super complex, but essentially you just sit in a minecart and watch the dragons get killed by falling TNT, which funnily enough is also glitched. These are the skulk blocks, but the two most interesting ones are the skulk catalyst and the skulk sensor. The catalyst has one goal, spread skulk everywhere. If something dies near the skulk catalyst, it will create a patch of skulk around it. How big the growth is depends on how much XP the mob drops. Sometimes the skulk catalyst might create a new skulk sensor. And let me tell you, this block is absolutely game breaking. 1.19 should have been called the redstone update because redstone will never be the same again. Hidden stairs, TNT landmines or automatic doors, the skulk sensor can do it all. The golden apple was added because of a joke. Player named JTE included a crafting recipe for gapples at the bottom of her guide. That inspired Notch to actually implement golden apples. His recipe used gold blocks, later changed to golden nuggets and then to ingots. In the original recipe, JTE thought of using golden ingots. She literally predicted the recipe years before. An iron golem will get absolutely demolished 
finished in a 1v1 fight. It has 50 hearts, which is 5 times less than the Warden. On easy difficulty, it takes 7 Warden hits, and on hard, just 3. That's why potions are again essential. You're gonna need strength, speed, and region for the golems. You can also brew some weakness potions for the Warden. A gang of iron golems is for sure one of the fastest ways to deal with this beast. Hardcore Minecraft is tough. One mistake and it's over. That didn't stop Filza from surviving 5 years in hardcore. During those 5 years he didn't use any totems. Unfortunately one day a baby zombie killed him in a cave. Surviving this long in hardcore is absolutely mental. Pink, brown, cyan and yellow make up more than 99.9% .9 of all axolotls. That leaves us with the blue axolotl which adds up the remaining 0.08%. Reds will never be added to Minecraft. Thank God. We already have the silverfish, which basically is a rat in some sense, as it crawls on the floor, makes strange sounds and hides in stone bricks. I think rats are just weird. Like which biome would they be in? Are they more of a cave mob? Let's be honest, no one wants to see rats anyways. Next time you're in spectator mode, try clicking on a mob. You'll get their vision and see everything the mob sees. This works on all kinds of entities, not just mobs. Some mobs have special vision effects. Creepers have pixelated and green tinted vision. Endermen see inverted colors and spiders have quintuple vision, slight blurring and high FOV. Pressing F4 removes the effect and your vision will return back to normal. Some people think that TNT duping is cheating, but honestly it's too fun to ignore. Either you're gonna spend countless hours digging by hand or just build a TNT duper and the work's done. Ever seen an underground village? Since the new caves can be really big, the game sometimes gets confused and tries generating a village in the cave, which doesn't sit well with the villagers. This bug keeps the iron golem busy, because living in a cave is quite dangerous. The massive structure in the middle of the ancient cities looks like a giant portal. This sparked a lot of discussion. Will there be a new dimension? Is that where the warden comes from? The portal is made from another new block called reinforced deep slate and this block is now going to be the hardest block in all of minecraft after bedrock of course it's gonna be 10 percent harder than obsidian and netherite blocks however once you mine it you will be very disappointed because it doesn't drop itself this block is unlike anything we've ever seen but if you think this is cool wait until you see what's later in the video there was once a secret item in the game it was the fire item it worked the same way flint and steel does but it also had another use crafting chainmail armor. In Bedrock Edition, you can still get soul fire as an item. The battle for the largest map art built in survival is very competitive. Garden of Eden made a massive map of a nebula. Then a group of players from 2B2T created these two maps, both of them smashing the previous record. But finally, Garden returned, this time with an image from the moon, consisting of 1.8 million blocks. If you ever find a chicken in the middle of the ocean, you've just found one of the rarest mobs in Minecraft. Let let me explain. A drowned only has a 5% chance to spawn as a baby. Then the game checks for nearby chickens. But since we're in the ocean, there aren't any. That means there's another 0.25% chance that the baby drowned will spawn a new chicken. Did you know that a pink wither was once part of the game? Same goes for the redstone bug or the chicken that laid diamonds instead of eggs. All of these were mobs brought to us in April Fool's updates, but they were made only as a joke. If you were to play Minecraft in baby 1.9 you might come across two glass pillars spanning into the sky this structure was super rare therefore not many players found it so why were there two seemingly random pillars in minecraft well they used to mark the location of the stronghold because the eyes of ender were not yet added the few players that did find these pillars thought that it was hero brian's doing because at the time the story of hero brian was believed to be true there have been many different ways of breaking bedrock anything from planting seeds to using bats. The headless piston method has been patched multiple times, yet it always comes back. In December of 2021, the log for shell exploit put every Minecraft player at risk. That's because anyone could have accessed your computer just by sending a single message in chat. Thousands of players were affected by this. In some cases, whole Minecraft and Discord accounts were stolen. You're playing survival and you need a little help. Just 
just open the world to land and allow cheats. But back in the day, there was no such option. You had to use an inventory editor, such as too many items or inf edit. Just talking about it gives me nostalgia, because I might have used them once or twice. Efo currently holds the record for the longest Minecraft Let's Play. He created his world in 2010, almost 12 years ago. I bet some of you weren't even born back then. Over the years, Efo revolutionized the game, from designing many new farms to inventing creative ways to use redstone, which made him a legend. It's no secret that Java and Bedrock have their differences, but this actually works in our favor when looking for rare mobs. In Java, baby zombies can only ride chickens. On Bedrock, however, they can ride a lot more than that. Cows, wolves, pandas and even other zombies. But I'd say the most exciting is the ocelot jockey. The chances of encountering this mob are 0.013% or in other words next to nothing. I also think ocelots are among the best choices for baby zombies to ride due to their incredible running speed and small hitbox. Back in in-depth bows used to be more like machine guns. It was around this time that little Dadusak first experienced this wonderful game. If you pressed right click while holding a bow, you'd start shooting arrows like crazy. Actually, at first, you didn't even need a bow to shoot arrows. You could just press tab to shoot them. When the bow was added, the texture looked like this, but Notch changed it to the one we have today. Unfortunately, in pre-release beta, the charging mechanic was added and that was the end of machine gun bows. Do you like traveling, but you never want to leave your house? Just build a walking home. That's what Mambo did, giving his house four legs and teaching it how to walk. That's one creative way to use flying machines. Playing on a seat throughout multiple updates will cause it to eventually start lagging. However, something can happen to your old saves that's much worse than lag. Certain old worlds on consoles and phones began generating chunks that were made purely from stone. You wouldn't find any ores, any dirt, nothing, just endless amounts of rock. The height limit wasn't always the same. In the beta version, it was only 127. However, beds, signs and torches could be placed above it. What's even crazier is that if you went above the build limit, you'd become invisible. How long could you survive in the void? This guy had a goal of spending 100 Minecraft days in the void in survival. The only way to live down there is by constantly eating golden apples. And you'll need a couple thousand of these, as well as a few elytra. So bring some shulker box with you. After grinding for days, he managed to achieve his goal, setting a new world record in the meantime. In the Minecraft community, the Elder Guardian is a bit of a joke. It was supposed to be the third boss, but let's be honest, a real boss should not have a spawn egg. The Elder Guardian only spawns in the Ocean Monument, which, as the name suggests, usually generates in the ocean. But if you're willing to go through a couple million seeds, you might find this. A completely dry Ocean Monument with all the Guardians inside. And since they don't take suffocation damage, unlike other water creatures, they won't die or despawn. This makes the dry Elder Guardian a spectacular find. Splashing an Enderman with a potion of invisibility will make it invisible. However, you can still see the Enderman's eyes for some reason. This doesn't happen with any other mob. Notch claimed that the Enderman is a quote, subtle reference to the Slenderman. With their inverted vision, Endermen see cobblestone as endstone. Because endstone is literally a yellowish version of cobblestone. This is the most advanced Minecraft tank. It has four-way flying machines, aimable TNT cannons, dual slime launchers, missiles that change direction, and even a mega new sitting on top. And of course, the tank itself can move. Loki, I always wanted to play World of Tanks in Minecraft. The nether is a dangerous place, so the next time you're going through a nether portal, block your shield and once you're on the other side, you will become unkillable. No matter if you're running or jumping, your shield will remain blocked. Unfortunately, if you try eating or placing blocks, your shield will reset back to normal. But until then, you will feel like Superman. Before redstone was in Minecraft, there were gears. They could be placed on walls and even on the sides of lava and water blocks. A player by the name of Time Times set a record for the fastest obtained diamonds in the history of Minecraft. This was done on a specific seed where you spawn inside of a blacksmith village house which has a chest containing one diamond. Imagine being the villager and seeing some player appear out of thin air just to steal your hard earned diamond in a third of a second. I can confidently say that you've never heard of the Zombigin. That's because the Zombigin was in the game for just one small snapshot. The developers messed up the 
code so badly and accidentally created this monstrosity. In this specific snapshot, trying to summon a chicken jockey results in a pig and a zombie riding the same one chicken. Unfortunately, this error was fixed in the next update, which led to this mob almost being forgotten in the history of Minecraft. Now, there are many ways to kill the Ender Dragon. Noobs use bows and arrows, speedrunners use beds, and red stunners use this monstrosity. You're looking at a cannon that can one-shot literally anything. It uses hundreds of TNT in the same spot to accelerate an arrow to hypersonic speeds. There was a time, not too long ago, when you could create armor with all protection types. This took place at the early stages of the 1.14 update. Someone discovered that you can create the God Armor Set with four protection types on it. Of course, this news spread quickly and once Mojang found out, they patched it immediately. But they didn't check my ender chest. <laughs> Wooden slabs required a pickaxe to be mined. They were also immune to fire. The first ever slab was the dirt slab, but they never made it. Rather, we got stone slabs and you could get those by mining coal ore because there wasn't any inventory or crafting at the time. Watching set seed speedruns is absolutely fascinating because the mechanics of the best runners are top notch. The world record stands at 153 by Rayo and it's beyond fast. SSG runs require you to be great at parkour, to know how to fast loot, to place down blocks quickly, and also to kill the ender dragon with just 4 bats. And you thought you were good at minecraft by doing a 4 block jump. A wither skeleton can't normally hold a bow, but if you give it a bow, it will shoot fire arrows, even when the bow doesn't have the flame enchantment. This mob used to be the rarest ever. Its name is this, and it was discovered by a user on Reddit. This creature is a left-handed, leader baby zombie, chicken jockey that can pick up items, can't break doors, has fully enchanted diamond gear, an enchanted iron sword, and only spawns in the desert during Halloween. But it's still not the rarest. Actually, not even close. Guardians don't need water to live, so putting one over slime blocks will make it bounce higher and higher until each bounce brings the guardian 17 blocks high. If you think this is crazy, wait until you see the facts later in the video. The illusioner has a really creative fight mechanic. Even if you shoot it with a spectral arrow, he will remain invisible, instead making his duplicates glow. Parrots start dancing when they hear a nearby jukebox, and at one point all dancing parrots started rapidly changing colors. Ocelots and cats are now two different mobs, but they still have one thing in common. Neither of them take fall damage, which is a reference to real life cats who always land on their feet. And no, that's not a myth, I tested it with my own cats. When a goat rams into a solid block, it will drop one or both of its horns. The goat horn makes a noise. But if you are a real musician, you can craft yourself a copper horn. This allows you to play 30 new sounds. Built in 2014, this massive tree is over 200 blocks tall. And at the time, it was the biggest tree ever made. It required 213,000 leaves and 175,000 locks. If this tree wasn't impressive enough, there's an entire elf town too. If you name a sheep Jeb underscore, it will turn into a rainbow sheep that constantly changes colors. When you share the sheep, it drops wool of the original color. But there's another mob that could use this feature. Shulkers. You can color a shulker box the same way you can color a sheep, so it only makes sense to give us disco shulkers. Prior to beta 1.7, there were no shears in Minecraft. The way to obtain wool was by punching sheep. They didn't drop any food, so it was pointless to kill them. In in-depth, sheep spawned without wool. With all the new changes in terrain generation, you might come across a giant sinkhole. Sometimes they are filled with water, sometimes they will lead hundreds of blocks down. Either way, the thought that you can accidentally fall into one of these is actually really scary. But fortunately, they are not as bad as the real life sinkholes. This guy placed 3.1 million TNT in creative. However, he didn't place the blocks by hand. He used the world edit. And honestly, anyone can do that. The real challenge is letting the TNT explode because that can take hours and you'll probably need to enchant your computer with blast resistance. Most people think that super flat can only be played in creative. However, you can achieve a lot in survival. You can even go into the nether thanks to the blacksmith. By the way, the nether is not flat. But what's even crazy 
crazier is that you can also go into the end. I could tell you how, or I can let the best super flat player explain. Mark Swamp, go ahead. That's right, you can access the end, but people think it's not possible. This is the biggest super flat myth. In 1.16.1, players found that strongholds naturally generate in new super flat worlds. This discovery was extremely lucky because the eyes of Ender didn't work at the time. However, this was removed in the very next update, until 1.18.2 brought back strongholds, and this time you can actually locate them using Eyes of Ender. Striders have a really cool feature. There is a 10% chance that a second Strider spawns on top of the first one, resulting in a double Strider. It would be sick if riding it was twice as fast. However, that's not the case. You can abuse gravity to dupe sand. To do this, you're gonna need to remove the sides of the end portal using a red mushroom. Then build a little duping setup and voila, you have infinite sand. And I don't think this is what Newton had in mind when he invented gravity. The Ender Dragon is the final boss of Minecraft, but there is a way to completely humiliate her. By placing obsidian at Y144, precisely above the fountain, and putting water on top of it, you've just broken the game. Thanks to the water, the Ender Dragon will start swimming up and become stuck. The new ancient city is going to be the largest structure in Minecraft, but perhaps also the most dangerous one. It's made up of different parts. Some have chests with amazing loot, others just serve as decoration. But the most exciting are the secret rooms hidden beneath the city. These rooms have a bunch of redstone to teach players how to actually use it. This idea is absolutely great, but there is a lot more to come. Let's talk about mangrove wood. It's super red, way more than jungle wood. It's even more red than crimson stuff. The mangrove door looks quite luxurious, almost like an entrance to a five-star hotel. But my favorite has to be the trap door. I think it's the best looking trap door in the game. I can't wait to see what builds the community comes up with, because this wood type is very different from the rest. However, getting loads of mangrove wood might be a challenge, since every mangrove tree has these long roots at the bottom, and the actual logs are only at the top. Luckily, mangrove trees have vines, so you can use those to climb above the roots. Trixieblox looked at his first ever build and remodeled it with all the skill and experience he's garnered over the years. It takes time to become a great architect, so don't get discouraged if your house looks like this. I once had a server where I made a giant cathedral. Obviously it wasn't as impressive as his, but it was by far my best base. However, I didn't make a backup of the server and these are the remaining screenshots I have. Exploring someone's survivor world is always fascinating, especially when it's 7 years old. This is what Jersey Boy was able to accomplish, a massive castle, a path leading into a custom forest biome, a town with Japanese samurai style, a medieval city and so much more. When you find a super tall mountain, naturally you want to climb it. But what if there was a small chance of an eagle's nest spawning at the top? The eagle would attack you if you get close, because it's trying to protect its home. Kinda like the eagle from Call of Juarez. But if you're able to get to the nest, you would be rewarded with eagle eggs and feathers. Minecraft needs rare mobs. Sure, we have the pink sheep, but let's be honest, zebras would be way cooler. You're in a savanna biome. And and boom, there is a zebra right in front of you. They'd be super rare and breeding two zebras together would be one of the hardest achievements in the game. I think Mojang should add more rare things. Enderman made zombie sounds before Mojang gave them their own sound. In the beta demo, Enderman dropped diamonds instead of pearls. Enderman had green eyes and were able to pick up any block including obsidian, spawners and even bedrock. Today they can only pick up these. In the early days you could only have 5 worlds in total. Pressing F would cycle between 4 levels of fog and render distance. The sun would go down in stages, which was both really cool and also quite creepy. On top of that, brightness was always set to moody, so once night came, you wouldn't see a thing. What happens when the game tries creating a mineshaft, but there's a huge cave in the same place? Well, this is what happens. The mineshaft will have supporting pillars going all the way down, and from the top, it will be connected by chains hooked up to the cave ceiling. And when the mineshaft generates in one of the new cave types, the result is just beautiful. Standing on a sapling is more dangerous than it seems. Once it grows into a tree, you might start suffocating. I've tried with the warden and trust me, it's near impossible. But I discovered this. If you use a spruce sapling, you can get 
get him stuck. The warden can't hit you because of the leaves. Oak saplings should also work, but I think spruce is the best since the leaves are closer to the ground. One of the most annoying mobs in Minecraft is the pufferfish. It deals a lot of damage and poisons you for 5 seconds, but this makes it perfect for our next trap. Despite seeming large, the warden's hitbox is quite small, so he will fit into a one by one hole. Then dig another hole, that's where you'll place your pufferfish. Putting them on every side will cause him to die faster. Now all you have to do is bait the warden into the little hole and watch him suffer. Nobody was excited for the 1.18.2 update, but it turns out this update was amazing for Superflat. Now you can find three new structures, pillager outposts, ruined portals, and mine shafts. To get them, you have to upgrade your world from 1.17 or before. Pillager outposts make it super easy to summon new raids, ruined portals give easy access into the nether, and mine shafts give us another new mob, the cave spider, which was previously impossible to get. A few years ago, there was an insane glitch where you could combine two different terrain generations. Half of your screen could be the default preset and the other half could be an ocean. This bug was extremely rare, so only a few players found it. The mixed world is amazing. However, I've left the most insane facts for the end of the video. There is a reason why bees are the cutest animal. The developers chose their size to be half a block, because Mojang considered this size to be the cutest. Although the first bee model was anything but cute. The warden keeps getting stronger and stronger, but the last change made the warden into an absolute beast. Previously, you could just build up above him and he couldn't hit you. Well now, the warden has a ranged attack called the Sonic Boom. This thing can go through walls and it will one-shot almost anything. Listen, if the Skulk Shrieker warns you twice, I'd highly suggest you run, because messing with the warden will not end well. A lot of items are going to get brand new textures. For example, the brewing stand will have the arms finally connected to the base. And portal frames will be changed to look more like endstone. Wolves will have new ears. Cocoa beans will look differently. The end rod will have less pixels and mycelium will look more like dirt. But what other textures could get an update? I'm thinking the iron door should get a handle. The ender chest needs a custom Christmas skin. And tree branches should have bark on all sides. Sides. Hopefully some of the developers are watching because we need these things in the game. Located on the oldest anarchy server, Mew Megabase is a combined effort of 36 players. The builders used a duplication glitch because this undertaking required millions of blocks and so they duped 200 million items just to be safe. First they marked out a gigantic circle, then used flying TNT machines to remove all the blocks in that area and covered everything in grass. The centerpiece mountain took two months to make, then a custom swamp pile, countless smaller houses and an enormous temple of the melon goddess. This base is one of the greatest, not just on 2b2t, but in all of Minecraft. The next story is unlike anything I've ever heard. Started in Pocket Edition, playing on an iPod. Dallas wanted a world that could be played forever. Few years passed and the game started lagging. That forced him to buy a gaming laptop and move over to Windows Edition. I guess he wasn't ready for Java yet. One cool thing that caught my eye is that with time, he makes the house look older, adding cobwebs to rooms he doesn't use, growing vines on the outside and repairing creeper holes with different blocks. The attention to detail is absolutely incredible. Next up, paintings. We all love them, but let's be honest, they're getting kinda old. The same designs have been in the game for a years. Paintings like the skull on fire or the creep bed have been used and seen millions of times, so why not add some new ones? Every major update, Mojang should add a new painting. There's just no reason not to. One of the most annoying things in Minecraft is accidentally trampling crops, especially when you're planting 100,000 potatoes. <coughs> so if you're wearing boots with the feather falling enchantment, you should be able to jump on crops without ruining them. It's literally called feather falling. And if I drop a feather on some farmland, nothing happens. Minecraft for free was a website where you played the pirated game when Notch found out he got furious. So the owners came up with an idea. Challenge Mojang to a Quake Free Duel. If Notch wins, the site owners have to make a dubstep song. But if they win, Mojang has to give them capes. The result? Notch completely destroyed them. Sand is pretty useful for killing things, as it can be used to suffocate the ward. Or use gravel if you don't like sand. The key is to get him into a hole. You can use pistons again, or just place two trapdoors facing each other and watch how stupid the warden is. This trick works on almost any mob in 
Minecraft. Because trapdoor seems like a full block, so the mob thinks it can walk over it without any issues. And that's when it falls into your hole. Once you capture him, place sand on top and watch him slowly suffocate. This isn't a fast way, but it definitely is the most satisfying. The origins of Super Flat are actually really interesting. One day I messaged Jeb on Twitter and he said that the idea for a flat world came from Dead Mouse's manager. If you don't know Dead Mouse, he's a really famous Canadian DJ and also the owner of the coolest Minecraft skin ever. Jeb realized this idea had potential and on the very next day, the new world type was announced. This change could potentially be the biggest of all. Mojang has been working on a completely new combat system, which has only been accessible through some secret snapshots. The trident will become the most overpowered weapon, because it will give you reach hacks. But that's not all, the axe has less reach than the sword, and every weapon will now have a charge. This is similar to the cooldown we now have, but instead of affecting damage, it affects reach. The shield has also been changed. If you have a normal shield without a banner, then you're lame. Because now having a banner will increase your damage resistance as well as your knockback resistance, making the shield twice as good. Another banger from Trixie Blocks. This build is from a creative challenge where he makes basic, intermediate and expert underwater houses. This is basic, this is intermediate, but we're here for the expert one. To enter the actual base, you have to go through the mouth. He even used player heads to replicate the suction cups that tentacles have. The insides of the monster look like a ship, because that's what sea monsters do. If there's an ocelot or a cat within 6 blocks, the creeper will forest gump out of there. So creepers should also run away. If they hear a jukebox, play the music disc named Cat. It sounds like this. And you can get this disc from dungeons or woodland mansions. Banner patterns are used to customize banners inside of looms. You can put it onto a shield and have a custom shield. Why not do the same with elytras? When playing Minecraft, you hardly ever look at your shield. But that's not the case with elytras. The grey elytra design is really boring to look at. But if we had more custom designs, that would honestly be a game changer. Just imagine wearing something like this. Wouldn't that be sick? Squids could be milked with a bucket, just like cows. There was one issue though, squids spawned at the bottom of the ocean. Squids didn't despawn, this made them the first Minecraft pet. Once you captured it into an aquarium, it would stay there forever. Food was hard to come by. One of the best ways was farming zombie pigmen, because they dropped cooked pork chop. This is how the first pigmen looked, suggested by the player Mick Lee. As a reward, Notch gave him a custom bacon cape. Pigmen weren't designed for the nether. They were supposed to live in villages. Chain armor is pretty useless. Sure, it's rare and looks cool, but what if it had some utility? What if you could wear chain armor when you're invisible, making the armor invisible as well? It's the only transparent armor set in the game, so it makes perfect sense. Currently, if you want to be truly unseen, you have to take all of your armor off, and that's a huge risk. With this change, you'd still be able to wear chain armor. Piglins love gold. They will do anything to protect it, and if you're not wearing a piece of golden armor, then you're gonna have a bad time in the nether. But what if piglins are fooled by yellow leather? Temporarily. If the player wears yellow dyed leather armor, piglins will not attack him. However, bartering with a piglin or coming too close within a few blocks will cause it to realize you're not actually wearing gold and immediately start attacking you. Iron golems spawned in the nether should be covered in warped or crimson fungus instead of vines and flowers. And maybe even have molten cracks in their body. There's a lot of ways Mojang could do this. Perhaps you may occasionally find a piece of exposed ancient debris. When mined, this will shockwave you back and the block will turn into a golem. 